Folks, Scott here with my 10 Cards 1 Kit video featuring the Love from Lizzie May 2021 Butterfly Wishes Card Kit. Lots of butterflies this month. Really unique purple and green color palette. As usual, I do take the colored card stocks in our kit and make card bases out of them. I do swap out Lizzie's alcohol-friendly white for some plain white card stock in my own stash. Now, most of you know that I'm not a huge fan of butterflies. Now, it's not as if I don't like butterflies. I just believe they're a little overused in the craft industry. <laughs> I did do a quick survey of my subscription kit stamp sets. And lo and behold, flowers and butterflies are at the top of the list. I have more flower and butterfly stamp sets from subscription kits than any other theme. I guess that's not too much of a surprise, but at least you know where I'm coming from. <laughs> Nonetheless, there are some great stamps in this kit, so I went ahead and embraced the Lepidoptera. Now, I'm always thrilled when Lizzie gives us deco page sheets in our kit. I really love these a lot. It's not like the American deco page where everything is layered flat and glued on top of each other. The European decoupage is all about dimension and layering. So for our first card, we are on the aubergine card base. We have our first decoupage card just for you. Happy Mother's Day. Mother's Day is still a week away, so I couldn't resist turning this into a Mother's Day card. I really do love these dark purple roses. I used all six layers of this decoupage sheet, but I glued those first two layers together. That first layer is just the silver mat, and the second layer is the oval inside that. I'm not a big fan of putting dimension between my mats and the art on top of them. I think when you look at it sideways or from any sort of angle, it makes the mat look like it's not centered. <laughs> it's all about where the shadows are thrown. So I did glue layer two directly down to layer one. All of the other layers are completed as marked on that decoupage page. I do like using these little thin, thin 3D foam tape. I'll put a link to these down below. I really like these because they're a little bit thinner than your normal foam tape is. So you can get, there's actually four layers here on this bottom rose. You can get your dimension there without it becoming out of control way too tall really pretty card here now i did debate this just for you banner here i looked at a couple of ways to cover that over but then i decided to just let that stay and add the happy mother's day i'm not a big fan of just for you as a sentiment obviously it's just for you i'm giving it to you <laughs> so i added a happy mother's day i think this is my only happy mother's day stamp i have in my stash it's from an old old this is a uh, gosh a paper pumpkin stamp set from April of 2016 an old stamp set but I really love that stamp it's got little flowers in it that kind of look just like the little flowers on our decoupage piece so to put this whole card together I trimmed two strips of that great geometric pattern paper down I put a little bit of sheer shimmer spritz on top of both of those strips just to keep them in line with all the glitter on our roses. I glued those down to either side of my aubergine card base and I trimmed their edges with our silver moon dust pinstripe peel offs. Those were great for the side borders. I grabbed all of my purple inks in my stash to see what kind of ink would work nice for this stamp here. This is my practice run. This is the Hero Arts uh, Grape Slush ink. Really a good color. Embosses nicely. This is the Wilted Violet Distress Oxide ink. A little bit lighter, but still good embossing. This is the Hero Arts Grape Juice ink. 
that is really, really dark. I really like that. But ultimately, I decided on going with this. This is the Love from Lizzie Pastel Purple Party Embossing Powder. I thought that worked great. This is my practice sheet, and I knew I was stamping on something even darker than that, so I knew that embossing powder would work. I stamped that stamp on the bottom here using Versamark ink and embossed it with the Pastel Purple Party Embossing Powder. Say that 10 times fast. <laughs> Plenty of glitter on that. I really like that embossing powder, and it's fine enough to make that sentiment really read with no problem whatsoever. Look at that sparkle. I glued the decoupage piece to the card front and added some silver hearts from our sequin mix and two of the resin roses beside the banner right here. I figure we're getting thick enough with this that we should be able to add those roses to this. I think they are just about the same height as our bottom rose there. I would definitely put this in a padded envelope before I tried to mail it to anyone. Really nice Happy Mother's Day card. Happy Mother's Day to everybody. I have a few options this year on the card I'm going to send to my mother for Mother's Day. Just for you, Happy Mother's Day. Love those purple roses. I really do like Lizzie's deco page sheets. They're always so much fun to play with. There's another one that has those dark purple roses on it and a butterfly. <laughs> and we have Butterfly Wishes Get Well Soon. I thought this one was fun because this decoupage piece is actually presented to us on a sheet as a diamond. This is the orientation that it's shown on our sheet. But when I realized that the background piece matched up perfectly with this pattern paper, I decided to go square. <laughs> this decoupage page has three layers, and I assembled it normally, except I did glue the body of the butterfly flat to the background and added foam tape behind its wings to give it its dimension. I cut a square piece of this pattern paper just following the lines of that pattern paper. This is three big squares by three big squares. So that's nine squares out of that square diamond pattern paper. And I glued the decoupage piece flat to that pattern paper, matching up the corners. It fit perfectly. I almost couldn't not do this with this decoupage piece. Now, I added a small scallop mat behind both of those with my Tonic Studio Scallop Squares layering dies. And I glued that whole assembly down to our lilac card base. I stamped these sentiments using the Hero Arts Grape Juice ink and embossed that with some clear embossing powder. Nice shine on that. I thought the Get Well Soon was appropriate for sending somebody butterfly wishes. A couple of iridescent sequins here and there, and a purple butterfly sequin adds another touch of shine to this card. I think this square orientation of the decoupage piece and the pattern paper, it works just as well as a diamond. It doesn't take up quite as much room, and I always love squares and circles together. Butterfly wishes get well soon. Plenty of shine on this card. Okay, none of the other decoupage sheets were particularly screaming at me at this point, so I decided to move on to our stamp set. Our next card on a white card base is Sending Love on Butterfly Wings, featuring that lovely Monarch Butterfly stamp from our main stamp set. You know how much I like my white space. <laughs> now, I stamped this butterfly on some Love from Lizzie super smooth alcohol friendly cardstock using my Misty and some Versafine Onyx Black ink. Now, I left that stamp in position on my Misty and I colored the butterfly with my Spectrum Noir alcohol markers. Tried to make it look as much like a Monarch Butterfly as I could. I added a number of white dots along his wings and on his body there just to make it look more like a monarch. They really sport those white spots along their edges. And then I stuck the whole thing back in my Misty and stamped the butterfly again using Versamark ink and then embossed that with some clear embossing powder. So there's some great shine and glitter to that butterfly. I really love that. That really locked those white dots in on the wings as well. 
then I fussy cut this butterfly. Yes, the antenna too. <laughs> I know, I'm obsessive. But actually, the embossing powder on this made it easier to fussy cut than I thought. Even on those little antenna, it actually made it easy to cut those out. I then did color the edges of my fussy cut piece with a memento black tuxedo marker, just so there's no white showing on the edges of that piece. Now, I thought about putting this on a plain white card base, but I thought it was just a little too plain. So I was digging through my embossing folders, looking for a nice flowery embossing folder, and I didn't find anything that really turned me on. But then I remembered that we have this lovely rose die cut in our die set. In our embellishment bag, we've got four dies. One of them is this lovely rose die. I used that die to come up with this textured background that looks like an embossing, but of course, it shows no embossing on the back. I die cut this rose 12 times from matching white cardstock and glued all 12 pieces to the white card base in a repeating pattern. I trimmed all of the overhanging edges and I'm very pleased with the results. It would have been easier, of course, with an embossing folder, but at least this gave me a perfect reason to use that rose die. <laughs> really pretty, very subtle, great pattern on that. I stamped and embossed this sentiment on the same white cardstock and die cut that out with a lawn fawn stitched rectangle die. I mounted the sentiment and the butterfly to the card front with foam tape and I didn't add any sequins or embellishments. I thought this butterfly really spoke for himself here. There is some extra foam tape under the wings to keep them up nice and high and his body is actually off of the card front too. Plenty of dimension there. I think I do like realistic butterfly stamps better than fanciful or, or fantasy butterflies. I enjoy the challenge of coloring them as accurately as possible. This looks very much like a monarch butterfly sending love on butterfly wings. <laughs> I was pleased to receive the butterfly background stamp. Now, I don't have a ton of background stamps in my stash, so even a butterfly background stamp is a welcome addition. <laughs> but that doesn't mean I have to use the background stamp as a background. <laughs> this next card is You Send Me Soaring with a great kaleidoscope of butterflies sweeping across our cards. <laughs> now, using my Misty again, I stamped the background stamp twice on a panel of black cardstock. I masked off the butterflies I didn't want. I don't know if you can see this here. There they go, they line up right there. So I masked off these four butterflies. I masked off this bit of butterflies here. I stamped that using Versamark ink and then embossed that with the Love From Lizzie Silver Glitz embossing powder. Then I did that one more time for the top portion and masked off all the butterflies below and beside that. Stamped that again with Versamark ink and emboss that again with the Love From Lizzie Silver Glitz Embossing Powder. Really a nice silver and plenty of little sparkles of glitter in that embossing powder too. I die cut that black panel then with a Lawn Fawn stitched rectangle die. This is an old stamp from a Stampin' Up! Sky is the Limit stamp set. You Send Me Soaring, I stamp that again in Versamark ink and emboss that again with the Love From Lizzie Silver Glitz embossing powder. I matted our black panel then to a brushed aluminum mat. Now I tried that silver mirror cardstock that we got in our kit and the mirror was just a little bit too much competition for our little silver butterflies here. So I went with a brushed silver mat on that, glued those both down to our moss green card base. You send me soaring. You don't have to use your background stamp. As a strict background, you can create your own focal point with just that stamp. You send me soaring. <laughs> and I love that a group of butterflies can be called a kaleidoscope of butterflies. <laughs> I really like this card. It's almost a direct opposite of the Monarch card, but both of them, I think, are very effective. And no purple on either. <laughs> now, there is also a butterfly die in our embellishment bag. I thought I could create something colorful and not necessarily what you might 
might think of with such a precisely themed kit like this. And we have a Best Wishes card with bright, colorful rainbow butterflies. <laughs> okay, so I am totally anal retentive and overly detailed craftsman here, <laughs> but I really like these rainbow butterflies. I rounded up some rainbow scraps of cardstock from my stash, purple, blue, green, yellow, orange, red, and die cut all the butterflies once from those. I die cut that butterfly three times from some of this black tie glitter cardstock. These are cardstocks I've had in my stash forever. I was very careful not to lose any of my little bits when I cut them out of all of the different colors. And I took the black glitter outlines and I covered the back of them with blue painter's tape, just blue painter's tape, and trimmed them around the edges. That blue painter's tape is really easy to cut. It was really easy to trim that into the shape of the butterfly and it gave me sticky surface to add all of my inner pieces to, to do a little inlay die cutting with that. I simply pieced all of the colors on top of that blue tape and then burnished everything down real good with my bone folder to make sure everything stuck well to those butterflies. I grabbed the Best Wishes die from our embellishment bag and I cut that seven times using all six of colors of the rainbow and one more black tie glitter piece for the top and I glued all of those together. It makes a really nice chunky sentiment and it matches those butterflies just perfectly. You get a real sense of that rainbow behind our sentiment. And I created my little partial frame here on the cream card base using the black glitter pinstripe peel-offs that are in this month's variety peel-off bundle. I glued everything down to the card front keeping the butterfly wings free. You can see there there's blue painter's tape on the back of that. Works perfectly. It holds everything down very nicely. I added some of the iridescent sequins from our sequin mix. They add a nice touch of sparkle and a little bit of movement to this card. You know how much I like my bright colors. I think this card satisfied my rainbow junkie needs this month. <laughs> Best wishes, colorful rainbow butterflies. Now, most of our decoupage sheets have these little extras listed on them. And this was an extra that I think I pointed out in my unboxing that I really liked on our lilac card piece. We've got congratulations, some lovely little congratulations featuring that extra decoupage piece of that single rose in this lovely oval. I mentioned how much I like that and I really like this card. Now when I was digging around in my embossing folders looking for something for the background of this, I came across this little embossing folder. This was actually a freebie embossing folder that came with my Sizzix Sidekick die cutting machine. A little bitty small one. I thought this worked perfectly. There's actually some little roses in and amongst the filigree in this little embossing folder. So I cut a panel of purple cardstock from my stash to two and three quarter inches wide by five and a half inches tall, and I embossed the opposite corners with that small embossing folder. I then took my little finger dauber that I reserved for white ink, and without adding any more ink to it at all, I just lightly rubbed that over the top of my embossing here, just to give it a little bit of highlight, a little bit more contrast with the background. That worked really nice. Now the purple rose ribbon caught my eye and I realized how well it complemented the embossing. This all looks like heavy filigree now to me. <laughs> I glued two strips of the ribbon to the sides of the lilac card base using my Xyron sticker maker and I glued the embossed panel on top of that. I stamped this perfectly tiny sentiment. I thought, oh, those sentiments are so small, but it works perfectly for this card. I embossed that on the front with Versamark ink, and I used some of the Love From Lizzie Very Vanilla embossing powder. It's just off-white, just a little bit, and the background on our rose piece here is off-white as well, so it wasn't too bright white along with that. I added the oval with foam tape, and I embellished the card with more iridescent sequins. That's one way to make a small icon really hold focus on a card. I really love that little 
single rose extra. This congratulations card feels very old timey, very filigree. <laughs> Is that a word? Congratulations. Okay, let's get back to our original Big Butterfly stamp in our Butterfly Wishes stamp set. I haven't used that entire stamp yet. It has a complete circle of little butterflies and dots around that main butterfly. So for our next card, we have a thank you card. Bright and shiny on this one. <laughs> now, I stamped that whole stamp again on some Love from Lizzie alcohol friendly white cardstock using Versafine Onyx Black ink and I embossed the whole stamp using clear embossing powder. Now, in Lizzie's unboxing this month, she mentioned that that white alcohol friendly cardstock of hers works well with watercolor markers as well. It's super smooth, and I thought I would give that a test and dog out my Zig Clean Color Real Brush markers to color this purple and green butterfly. Yes, that paper works very well. So I colored this butterfly with my Zig markers, and then I die cut the whole piece out with a circle nesting die. And I die cut three more layers of that to make it a nice little chunky kind of a chipboard piece. After I die cut that out, I took my grape juice ink and blended in my grape juice ink to color all the white in the background, a little darker on the edges, a little lighter towards the butterfly. And I did use that same ink to ink up the edges of those four pieces of cardstock all glued together. Now I did take the long butterfly border stamp and I stamped the two edges of the aubergine card base using Versamark ink. It's a little hard to see. I think you can see it there. It's a little hard to see in photos and on video, but in real life, it is a really nice, subtle texture on the background of the card on the two sides. I thought that worked really nice and kind of spread that little butterfly theme throughout the whole card. I cut a strip of that silver foil butterfly pattern paper. I think this is two and seven sixteenths inches wide. I literally just followed the natural dividing line on that pattern paper. Cut that out, glued that down to the center of my card base. I lined the edges of that with more silver moon dust peel offs from our kit. And then I glued our whole butterfly flat down to the top of the card, enough to mention there with the four layers. This sentiment is the extra from the Just For You decoupage sheet. <laughs> I attach that to the card front with some foam tape. I tell you, the shine from the foiling and from the glitter on the sentiment and from the embossing on the stamp, that's all of the sparkle that this card needs. Thank you. I also received the add-on Butterfly Wings stamp set. This butterfly has flowers for wings. I thought that was very unique, very interesting. Of course, you know, I'm gonna color that up. So on the moss green card base we have, don't quit before the miracle happens. And that is some kind of a miracle butterfly, I tell you. Oh, so interesting. I stamped that butterfly on more Love From Lizzie white cardstock using Versafine Onyx Black ink, and I colored them with my Zig Clean Color markers, and then I fussy cut him out. Had to fussy cut him out. <laughs> I die cut the grid pattern paper with a Lawn Fawn stitched rectangle die. I added a thin white mat behind that to match the white border around my fussy cut butterfly, glued those both down to the moss green card base. I glued the butterfly body flat to the card front and then added some foam tape behind his wings to give him a little dimension. I printed this sentiment on a scrap of white cardstock. This is the fontdiner.com sparkly font. I thought that worked really well. I love the sentiment, don't quit before the miracle happens. I'll have links to all the fonts I use over on my website at cardcutups.com. I die cut the printed sentiment with another lawn font stitched rectangle die, and I foam tape it to the card front. I added a little sparkle to the butterfly body with my Spectrum Noir sparkle pen. There you can see it there. And a few iridescent sequins for a little extra pop. That's a very interesting butterfly stamp. I don't think I've ever seen anything like this before, and I really love this sentiment. 
it's very encouraging. <laughs> Don't quit before the miracle happens. <laughs> now, though this card is very similar to my Monarch Butterfly card, they're quite different in appearance. I, I really enjoy coloring. I think you all know how much I love to color. It's almost therapeutic for me. <laughs> and if I'm going to take that much time to color a stamp, then I think that stamp should probably be the main focal point on a card. <laughs> and these are both pretty big butterflies also. They certainly hold the attention. <laughs> now, I still have to use these little perspective butterflies in our main stamp set. And I found a quote that really spoke to me this month. Yes, I still do some research on all of my themes whenever I get a new kit. It helps my poor tired old brain come up with ideas. And so we have, this is on the cream card base, we have Happiness is a butterfly which, when pursued, is always beyond our grasp but which, if you will sit down quietly, may alight upon you. A Nathaniel Hawthorne quote. For some reason, that really caught my eye. It really moved me this month. I think we are all always in search of happiness. <laughs> so I started this card laying out the quote in my Silhouette software and printing it up on my printer. This is the Dream State font and the copper plate font on the bottom for his name here. So I printed this up on some white cardstock and I used my little butterfly stamps to show me where I should die cut that panel out. So I die cut my printed verse with a lawn font stitched rectangle die and I laid out the three little butterfly stamps and stamped those down using onyx black ink and I colored those with my Stabilo markers. They have little itty bitty tiny fine points and I thought that would help color these smaller ones. These butterflies color up really really quickly. I cut this rose pattern paper to four and one eighths inches by five and three eighths so that gives us a little sixteenth of an inch of a mat of that cream cardstock behind that. I glued that down to my cream card base. I glued my printed panel on top of that right in the center. I added some more of those iridescent sequins to give us a little more shine and pop a little bit of movement to this card. Since these stamps are all basically the same butterfly in different orientations and different sizes, it kind of feels like the butterfly is getting closer to us on this card. <laughs> now, I don't usually include such a large verse on my cards, but this felt quite special to me. Now, my stash of butterfly puns is running perilously low, but I did find another one that I thought would be fun this month. So for our last card, we've got a little pun for you. And I've been seeing some of these full frontal shaker cards on the interwebs recently. I decided to try my hand at one. And we have on our last white card base, have a flutterly amazing day. <laughs> flutterly, that's a good pun. And of course on the inside, happy birthday. And this is a shaker card. Look at that, a full frontal shaker card. Lots of movement with all of our butterfly sequins inside there. Now this is actually quite easy and really effective. And you know, a card like this would go through the mail with no problems whatsoever. Here's a quick take on how I put this little full frontal shaker card together. So here's our card base, an A2 card base, four and a quarter by five and a half, already folded. Here's our pattern paper for the background. This is four and a quarter by five and a half with just the tiniest bit extra shaved off on the edges. I'd say maybe a 16th of an inch, maybe a 32nd of an inch, just a tiny bit smaller so our vellum can wrap around it nicely. So here's a thin sheet of vellum. This is pretty standard vellum, I believe. We're gonna cut this an inch wider in both directions. So we'll cut this at five and a quarter by six and a half. Now I do actually have a, a six and a half inch dot here on the bottom of my guillotine cutter. That should work quite nicely there. We'll score this to wrap around our card front. 
So that's a half an inch on each side. So we're five and a quarter. So a half an inch is four and three quarters. Six and a half becomes six. We'll do that on all four sides. So that's the front of our shaker all scored. I will enforce those just a tiny bit. And then we'll trim the corners away so that it folds nicely over the front of our card. Just a little wider than where the score lines are. Just going up almost to that cross point. And trim all four corners the same, just so it gives us nice clean corners when we wrap this around our card background. Okay, now we'll go in and reinforce all of these score marks. Commit your crease. I want these to be as straight and smooth as possible. These are going to be tight on our background piece, which is why we trimmed that down just a tiny little bit. I will go ahead and put my background piece in there before I do those last two creases. Tuck it right in the corner. Make sure that this will enclose our background with no big lumpies or bumpies. Of course, you can use thicker vellum for this, but then I think you don't see the shaker bits quite as much. So that fits. We'll pull our background out of that and let's add our sequins. Now, I think I'm going to try and stick with just the butterflies for our sequins here. The little cup sequins are actually a little thick for such a flat shaker card. I'll leave the hearts and I'll leave the butterflies. I think that's pretty good. Do I see any more cup sequins in there? Everything seems nice and flat. We'll use some nice strong Suklang tape. This is quarter inch tape and line all of our flaps, trying not to knock all of our shaker bits out and trying not to tape any of our shaker bits down. <laughs> okay, that looks good. Here is our background paper. We'll tuck that right into the corner. Fold that over and press it down. Go to the next side. Release our liner paper. Fold that edge over and down. Side three. There's a little sequin right there. Tuck her back under. Side three and our final side. And this should give us a nice shaker full card shaker look at that <laughs> so this will then just glue this to our card front make sure my butterflies are pointing in the right direction as far as the pattern paper goes even that up with my card base and there we have a full frontal a full frontal shaker card <laughs> now i printed our little punny sentiment using a scrap of cardstock and my printer. This is in the Henny Penny font. I die cut it with a Hero Arts Infinity Oval die, and I added a purple holographic mat behind that with another oval die cut to the next size. I glued those together and foam taped them both to the card front. Two of the butterfly stickers complete our picture on here. I love how the holographic butterfly stickers match up with the holographic mat on this. And of course, all of those sequins in the background just move all over the place. I did stamp the small happy birthday sentiment on the inside of the card. I used grape juice ink. Hey, happy birthday! Have a flutterly amazing day. There's lots of sparkle on this. It's been a while since I've made an actual shaker card, but I love this version. I think that's really nice. I had a friend over to the house this last weekend from out of town, and she picked this card up off the desk, and she went, oh, it moves. I love that. <laughs> Have a flutterly amazing day. And that completes my 10 cards using the Love from Lizzie May 2021 Butterfly Wishes card kit. 
eight out of my ten cards actually have butterflies. <laughs> I think I may have just out butterflied myself. <laughs> actually, I think we achieved a terrific variety of cards here, not only in sentiments, but also in looks and design. Now, I used all of the colored card stock for my card bases, but I actually didn't use any of the silver mirror card stock. I will hang on to that dearly. <laughs> I used almost every stamp in our stamp set, except for the good luck and the happy retirement mini stamps. I'm sure those will get a turn at some point. I used two of our decoupage sheets, along with one little extra. There's where that single rose came from and I used six of our 12 pieces of pattern paper. I used a few of our peel-offs and a little bit of everything in our embellishment bag. I even used the two add-on stamp sets this month. <laughs> a pretty good overview of all of the items you can get in this kit and in the extras this month. A really good assortment of very useful cards. I'm quite pleased. And hey, you know, I didn't even collapse into a bumbling ball of butterfly-inflicted psychoneuroses. <laughs> so I survived yet another month of butterfly. <laughs> this kit has sold out already as with many of Lizzie's kits this one went really quickly there are a number of add-ons still available including the pattern paper pack and the decoupage pack both of those would make 10 plus cards all on their own if I've managed to catch your eye or given you some ideas of your own please use my link in the description down below if you do go shopping with love from Lizzie Thank you so much for sharing some butterfly fun with me here this month. Your time and attention means so much to me every time I post. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please subscribe. Hit that bell so you are notified when I post a new video. And remember to like me, list me, pin me, post me, share me with all of your crafty friends. Don't waste your time chasing butterflies. Mend your garden and the butterflies will come. <laughs> I send you and yours chuckles and cheer, light and laughter, and as always, happy crafting. For more detailed information, better pictures, and product links, please visit my website at cardcutups.com.